Oh, yeah. yeah she can I'll just keep typing right. yeah. in the chat. Okay, so my name is Nicole Jahari. Um, I know if you see or you will see the agenda, we're going to spend the majority of the time working on benchmarking today. Um, but I do realize that you guys have used Info before. Um, so I felt it would be most appropriate um, to just show you how to navigate the new one. So we'll spend time on what's new on Info Plus. Um, and how to actually use the system. And please feel free um, to reach out with any questions. I can see the chat box, and I'm trying to keep it up as much as possible. Um, so I'll try to answer your questions as soon as I can. All right, so again, my name is Nicole Jahari. I have a background um, as a teacher, um, teaching K-5. Currently work in social development and math in my school district, but my background is actually as a reading specialist, so and a lot of both. Um, we can skip through. Let's see. Oh, those are my kids. I was three year old and an eighteen month old. Can you busy? All right, so before we get started, I just have to go over this copyright notice. So okay. you are welcome to share this. PowerPoint slide and for all the information you hear today um, with your school district, with your school. Uh, we just have to put this up so you don't share it on teachers, pay teachers, or something like that. All right, so again, we're going to spend most of our time on benchmarking, but I want you to be able to navigate the system basically um, and know how to use it. And then lastly, I want to make sure that you know where all where you can find additional resources if you have questions later. So what is Influx Plus? Influx Plus is early literacy, early numeracy, reading and math assessment. The early literacy and early numeracy are for your kinder and first graders, and second grade on up, it would be considered reading and math. Um, they still link well to instructional planning and monitoring, and probably the main difference um, is that now, along with your CBM or curriculum-based measures, you also have standard-based assessments that are at the benchmark period that you could either choose to use or not use, um, depending on your school's needs. And Info Plus remains an essential component of your RPI or NCBS model. All right, so in terms of data collection in the past, you've had um, paper from the student, you have the same copy of the paper in front of you and you just mark um, as the student reads on. Um, now you have digital record form. So the student still has the paper in front of them, but now you're just marking on the computer, on your iPad, on your Chromebook, whatever device you have um, for all kindergarten and first measures and for all grades for oral reading, who are doing oral reading fluency or what RCBM was. So if you're doing RCBM on first through 12th grade, um, then you will still have the paper printed off for the student and you'll be marking those mid cues on um, your computer screen. Now everything else, second grade on up, students will take via test map, um, which is just an app that you can have downloaded on your computer. It is a secure, um, with secure, System. So when students open it up and log in, it locks them out of everything else on the computer. So they can't, if they pull up a calculator or a web page or something like that, it'll knock them out and you have to unlock it for them again. Um, so that's what we mean by secure. And the great thing about it is you can get your results back immediately. Really and the same right. with the yeah. kindergarten and first grade measures, you score it right away so the results are already on the system. You know, we're entering it in later. So this is just an example of what the digital record forms would look like. Um, this is letter naming fluency. Letter naming fluency hasn't changed at all, except they fixed the font, so there's no more confusion between the I and the L. Um, so the student would have this paper in front of them, and this is what the computer screen would look like for you to mark. And I will let you guys get a sample account today, so you can try out those on your own as well to really see how it works. Online assessments, again, second grade through 12th grade, they're on a computer. You can administer it to your full class at once, or you can let each individual student log in 
um, whenever it's more convenient for you. Those scores are automatically put into the system and you get your reports immediately. You're able to pull reports immediately. Um, so, first, just remember AIMS Web Plus continues to be just for you as a teacher or the administrator to log in and view your students' data or assess your students. And when the students are taking their tests, they're going on to TestNav. So, TestNav is only for students to log in and take their assessment. You don't go on here at all. So here's an overview of all the assessments that are available. These are not all required, these are just the ones that are available in AIMS Web Plus. And I'm going to walk you through some of those. I know I was looking through these slides and realized that this, this set of slides that I sent to you um, doesn't have each one listed, but I think it's beneficial to just kind of talk you through them a little bit. Um, so I will do that. Just a moment, I guess. I'll go over this as well. So, cycle of assessment is the same. I don't think we need to spend that much time on it, but you benchmark your screen your students three times per year, so fall, winter, spring. You analyze that data to determine which students are at risk, plan instruction and intervention, progress monitor those students at risk, and then just adjust your instruction based off the data you're getting from progress monitoring. That's generally how it's done. Sometimes people have different needs. Sometimes schools already have it, have determined which students are um, in need of additional assistance and then just benchmark those students. So it really depends on how your school has decided to, to use the program. Okay, your benchmark windows are still the same. Um, we really recommend as soon as you can get things started in your school, so probably within the first month of instruction, um, and when you do assess your students, we, we try to um, tell schools to assess their students within about a two-week period. Um, that's just because we don't want one group of students receiving a month more of instruction than the students who took the assessment at the beginning. So that's just kind of um, give everyone fair opportunity on the assessment. So you just benchmark. In the fall, then you can decide which students need to progress monitor based off of that, and then winter, and then to the end of your school year. All right, so within our assessments now, with the AIMS Web Plus, you have your curriculum based measures, those ones you've always had, and then you have the standard based assessments. The standard based assessments are just for the benchmarking period um, because you wouldn't want to progress monitor on the standard every single week. You wouldn't see the growth that you're looking for. Um, you also would be wasting a lot of your instructional time. So the curriculum-based measures are those short measures that are usually about a minute. Maybe, I think on, on here, maybe there's one that takes up to seven minutes top. Um, and they can be quick measures that you can use on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. But at the beginning of the year, those curriculum-based measures and the standards-based measures are going to give you a composite score. Um, and I'll show you what that is in just a moment as well. And then once you make the composite score, the benchmark period that's supposed to help you determine which students are at risk. Okay, so in this case, they're showing you a reading composite for grade fourth grade on up. So they would take three tests at the benchmark period. So. RC, which is reading comprehension, vocabulary, and then silent reading fluency. So they take those three tests and together we give them a composite score, and then you can decide to um, progress monitor based off of that score. All right, so I'm going to actually show you the assessments now. So this is in on your slides, but let me just pull up another PowerPoint because I feel that is useful. So this is print concepts, and you also, if you don't have this in your slide, um, there's... All right, if you don't have this in your slide, um, I will send this out to you afterwards. So this is just a breakdown of, there's a page for early literacy, early literacy, reading and math, and it tells you which um, of these assessments are available for fall, pre-k, and kinder. 
length of pre-K can serve and spring. And then it goes on for second grade on up, but um, it tells you which ones are available. And then the one with the check mark and an asterisk next to it are the ones that are actually required for you to get a composite score. So if your school cares about getting a composite score, then you would need to, in fall of kindergarten, give letter naming fluency and this letter word down fluency. The other ones would just be option free, but not required for the composite. And then, then also, next to each assessment, it tells you if the purpose is for screening, which just means benchmarking, basically getting a baseline, um, or if it's for screening or progress monitoring. So all of these that say both, you could progress monitor with as well. So you could benchmark, and then you could use it for progress monitoring. So I'll just walk you through those quickly. This first one is print concepts. So this is meant just to be a screening tool, beginning of the year kindergarten. Um, it's basically just a checklist. Um, you present the student with a book, and the student is able to, you check off if the student is able to recognize the letters, the direct or correct orientation of the book, pictures, etc. Here's the initial sound. So an initial sound, this is a new one, a name club club, um, that I think is beneficial. So you'll have present a list of pictures um, in front of the student, and you have a question like, point to the one that starts with the, after you, so first you say the word, excuse me, um, this is corn, penguin, ball, feather, you can point to each one, and then you say point to the one that starts with the, if they're able to identify penguin, great, you just check it. If not, then you just push the X next to it. Um, so um, this assessment um, basically just, okay, excuse me. Um, I got a message. I was making sure it wasn't one of you not able to hear me. Um, this assessment just basically tests if they have their initial down. This is letter name fluency. As I said before, this one didn't change, um, except for the font is better. Letter word sound fluency. Um, so this is almost the same as before, but it gives you more information now. So for the first page or so, it's just the letter down. So the student um, goes up and down the columns now. They just tested it and found that it worked better for students. Um, so the students just say the letter sound, and then if they get past the first page, um, it moves on to blends of CD keywords. So you get a little bit more feedback from your students who are ready to move past just letters. Um, and then it was in, unlike the nonsense word fluency, it's actually marked if they get it correct or incorrect. So if they are able to say dog, they get it correct. If they are able to, say, if they just say dog and can't put it together, then you would just mark that one incorrect. Okay, phoneme segmentation. Um, this is about the same as well. Um, the main difference is that it's no longer time. So in the past, I gave this assessment um, to my students, and I would feel like I need to rush through it. So I'd say cat, and they're supposed to say app. And I would feel like I need to say the next word as soon as possible because it was a timed assessment. Now it's just on time. When you're done marking all the ones they did incorrect, you can just click score and say student finish the form, and at that point it will um, score it for you. Okay, nonsense word fluency is still there. It's not one of my favorites, but um, some people really like it. So if you still like it, um, it's there. Auditory vocabulary. Um, this one is just for um, benchmarking, um, but you would ask students to point to, say, point to the watermelon, and they would point to the picture of the watermelon. So it's just kind of a screener to, to understand where your students are and they use the English language, or you can administer it to them in Spanish um, if you were able to do that. Um, here's another new one, word reading fluency. So this is for recommended for first grade. Um, throughout the year. You can use this for progress monitoring as well. Um, it's based off of the Dolce and Fry sight word list, and um, they just read as many words as they can off the list for one minute. And it is um, 
progressive. So the, the first word list, it, it moves it around each time, but it's the same words that are simpler at the beginning and it gets more challenging um, towards the end of the first page, the second page. Yes, so Molly just messaged me that we don't have the slides that explain these. Um, I, I realized this when I looked into the slides I sent you last night, so I apologize for that. Um, I guess it was for some reason. It doesn't include it in the transition webinar, uh, but I can send them to you right after this. Okay, so I'll send you these slides and the handout. Okay, oral reading fluency. Uh, is this is basically your RCDM, okay? Um, the only difference now is that it's only two stories read aloud. Um, it used to be three, so now it's just two stories and it takes the average, and then if your progress monitoring, you just give them one story per week. So they read for one minute, and you mark if they got correct and correct. This is a new one, um, listening comprehension. Um, it's just within the system this week, but the students would be able to circle the correct picture from four choices um, when given a verbal prompt. Spelling is also new, that's for kinder and first. The student writes the words that they're dictated to them and then you can correct it. That's also brand new, so I have, I have to look at that in the system. That's something you want to use. Okay, so early numeracy. So I'm going to ask, will the RCDM be different stories than the ones we currently use? Uh, there's, I, I'm pretty sure they're almost the exact same, but there's maybe two or three that got changed, uh, maybe a name got changed, or um, just a single word in there for political correctness. Um, so it is recommended to reprint them, but I would think you are limited in your print resources, I would actually just, I would pull it up and check before you print them all. And I will show you where you can print all of those. You'll all have access to print anything you like print today. Um, so don't worry about that part. All right, so this is, any more questions about the early, early literacy assessment? <laughs> All right, feel free to ask um, on the chat if you have a question on early literacy, and I'll move on to early numeracy for now. Uh, so again, you guys will get these handouts after this. Um, number naming fluency. This one is the same, except now it goes to 20. It used to just go to 10, so this is more aligned with our standards. And this is supposed to be given throughout kindergarten. Of course, if you have a first grader who needs it, you can give it, give it to your first graders or even higher than that if you needed to. Want any total fluency? This is a new one that's basically testing advertising, which I like. Um, so it just, the student will see basically the face of a guy and have to tell you how many they see in each box. Um, if they get through the first part, it will give them two boxes and they have to say how many all together. So they have to say five down here on the bottom left hand corner. This is quite a different fluency. Um, this is an option to use. Um, notice um, this is in color, we need to be printed in color. Okay, there's a couple things that in kinder and first that do need to be printed in color, so something to be mindful of. Um, in this case, for quantity difference fluency, the student would say how many more dots need to go in the um, go in this first box, the blue, to match the red. Okay, concepts and applications. This is your standard based assessment um, for kinder and first. In this case, there would be some things to print out, and you would read the question to them and mark if they got it correct or incorrect, and this is on the standard. Um, this one takes about the seven to 12 minutes. So you could just uh, determine and allow, you could choose to allow time for that. Um, you could choose not to get the composite score. It's just kind of up to you what your needs are. Here's another comparison fluency. Um, so this um, is like the one from before, it just goes to higher numbers as well. So students say which number is greater, out of each pair. 
math fluency. Um, so for first grade, um, this is addition, subtraction to 10. Student has this paper in front of them and you mark on your computer screen if they got it correct or incorrect. So they're mentally solving, they're not writing the answers in, they're just telling you out loud which what the answer is to each problem. Um, this is an option for you. Um, can, it's to test, can students add 10 to a number or take 10 away? Um, so that goes into first grade standards. Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions about those early numeracy measures. Um, and if I don't see any questions pop up in the chat, um, I'll just move on to reading. Um, so this is for second grade on up. Okay. Um, oral reading fluency, we kind of already went over. Um, that's your RCBS. So that's for that required for second and third grade, but notice it's not required for fourth grade on up. You can totally give it if you'd like to, um, but their assignment reading fluency, that's supposed to replace that, and I'll show you in a moment. Um, however, if students take the assignment reading, fluency test and their score comes up invalid. They may score too low or they just click through it or something like that. It will not count that score in the system and require that you give them the oral rate fluency. The oral rate fluency is required for second and third grade and fourth graders and on fourth grade on up if their score on silent reading fluency comes out as invalid. So here's your oral reading fluency. Obviously be appropriate to their grade level, but they read two to read aloud, each for one minute at the screening period. Here's vocabulary, so this is a new one. This is just for benchmarking period. Um, it's based off of SAT style questions, so someone who has courage is, and then they'll read them the responses and they choose which one they feel is correct. Um, I really like that this assessment reads them the question and the answers, um, so that way we're really able to test the student's vocabulary versus their reading ability in this case. Um, so that's the vocabulary one. Reading comprehension. Uh, so this is this one with six passages is only for benchmarking because it does take a little while. Um, the student reads the story, and when they're done reading, they answer the questions over on the right hand side and the text stays here so they can keep referring back to the test to answer the question and there's just, like in this case there's five questions that go with the story. Um, this one on the other hand is a progress monitoring tool. Um, so if you'd like so if you need to progress monitor them on reading comprehension versus reading fluency, um, this is an option for you. So this is they read three segments of text and answer the multiple choice questions about each segment. Um, and right now, this is just available for second through fifth grade for progress monitoring. So if you feel like you need to test them on reading comprehension after giving this assessment, you could choose to progress monitor with this shorter measure. Silent reading fluency. So silent reading fluency is that one that you would give to fourth graders on up, even though it says second through twelfth right here, that is a typo. Uh, sorry about that. So this should say grade fourth through twelfth. Um, they have a small reading passage, usually about three sentences. When they're done reading the reading passage, they would click next. Um, it gives them a question um, and a list of answers. They select the answer. Um, for the sign that reading fluency, the difference is one is a shorter passage, but when they click next, the passage goes away and they have to answer the question without the passage. Okay, so when they click next, it's measuring kind of their speed, how long did they take to read that, um, but then were they able to comprehend it? Um, if they could comprehend it, then hopefully they'd be able to answer the question. Okay, so that's why sometimes it comes out as invalid though, because if the student was not, was able to maybe read it, but they're not retaining what they just read, they would be getting the questions wrong. If they click quickly through the assessment, they would be getting the questions wrong. Um, so in that case, it will maybe give them the oral reading fluency. 
and you could also his fluency wasn't the issue. You could choose to progress monitor them on his reading comprehension progress monitor tool. If they were um, in an older grade and it didn't turn out, let's say they were not took it at the fifth grade level and they didn't do well, you could give it to them at the fourth grade level and see if it would come out valid then. Um, that's called survey level assessment, and we'll spend some time on that as well. I'm not sure if you use that in 1.0 or not. Okay, going to go over the map, and then I'm going to move into the system and actually show you how um, Android Plus works. And I can give you guys one as well. Um, survey level could just be used as a survey level assessment, but that reading for the feet, yes. Um, really, all of these that are progress monitoring tools could be used as survey level assessments. Anything that you can use for progress monitoring. All right, so for math, notice up here at the top, concepts and applications is untimed, but it can take up to 25 minutes, and that's just for benchmarking. Okay, so second grade on up, they would take this concepts and applications, this fall, winter, spring, based off of the standard, and then they would also take um, these two assessments right here. Um, these two would be used for progress monitoring. They would take the place of MCOM. Um, if you use MCAT, that one is still available. Um, but these would be your, this takes the place of MCOM. And you can use that as well. MCAT or this one. So here's your concepts and applications. There would be questions that um, that student grade level standard. They answer the questions. They are allowed to take a pencil for this part of the assessment. So I always recommend when I'm giving the benchmark is when they log in to take the math test, I allow them to have to, I pass out paper. They have a paper in front of them. And when they get past the first part, which are these two assessments that take their time, that take three minutes and four minutes. At that point when they're done, I then give them a pencil. Um, and then they take this, this is part of the assessment, um, which is untimed. That's just for benchmarking. So here's number comparison fluency triad. This part is all mental, so no paper pencil. And they would need, they would read, okay, 150, and they have to decide is that closer to zero. 200 or closer to the middle. And um, obviously, this would change depending on their grade level as well to be appropriate. This is mental computation fluency. So, mental computation fluency, the student is given a problem and they have to decide um, which answer they think it is mentally. They are meant to be able to solve mentally. Um, and then together, these two assessments, so your number here is a fluency triad and your mental computation fluency together are going to give you a number to fluency score. Okay, so those two assessments go together to give you a combined score. Um, these classic measures are also available. So if you went to NCAP and you're trying to assess um, critical thinking in math, then you can still use this one. If you like maze, and you don't, and you like having the paper pencil, so it's still doing reading maze. Um, although, I think that the, the reading comprehension progress monitoring tool has been shown to be more valid than maze, and I think it's a lot easier than having to grade it. Um, so, if for me, I'd probably use the online version, but depending on your needs, you can still use maze. And then there's written, written expression, it's still the exact same as well. So, if you um, for progress monitoring writing, um, you could use written expression. So, now the classroom teachers. So, there's an MCAT, reading made, so available, written expression, so available. All right, so I'm going to just go into the actual account and show you how some things work, and then I'll give you guys a log in. And feel free to ask me questions. As you have them. If you have any questions about the measures, please ask me and I'll make sure you get handouts um, later today as well. And for some reason, they don't include it in the PowerPoint, but I 
personally, for someone who moved from 1.0 to plus, I feel like it's really useful to know um, what the actual assessments are. Universal benchmarks. Yeah, then I just went to 17. All right. <laughs> so I'm notice today I'm going to be going into, it's actually, I click out of these things, but uat-app.inputplus.com. So instead of going into the inputplus.com that you're normally going to be doing, I'm going to uat, which is just like a sample account. Okay, and when you first log in, um, this is the screen that you'll get to. And I will give you in a couple minutes a, sure, you know, um, so Amanda, thank you want us to do this along with you. Um, why don't we do that? So then we don't have to waste time going back and getting you your account. So everyone go to uat-app-app at aimswebclub.com. And where it says customer ID, you're going to all put today, 19518. And I'll type it in here. I guess I can put the, since everyone has the chat box, I can put everything there as well. Dash. But you can't see it, you can just copy paste it probably. Okay, then 19518 is that first. Next to that little tag in the login. And then this, the tricky part is going to be that you need a different number to log in. So you're going to have to number off. So everyone's going to be teacher. What's the number? 195. So I'm going to log in really quick and then I'm going to give you guys numbers for one moment. Don't feel like you're supposed to log in already or not. 19518, it's blurry. 19518. Yes. Okay. So someone gets to be teacher six six. Means what? Yes. What is the username? Do we have? I just asked. Yes, I'm telling you guys the username and passwords now. I was making sure. So someone teacher six six six, teacher six six seven, six six eight, six six nine, etc. Okay. Everybody needs a different number, and then the password. For everyone, it's going to be password one. Okay, password one for everyone. So actually, right? Does that make sense? Oh, any. Okay. Down in the bottom corner, just the number one. So you, oh. everyone, the the ID okay. and the first page. You're 66. Yeah, I'm in. So your teacher 67. 19 518. The yeah. username yeah, for everybody is going to be teacher eight, and then a number. So 667, 669, okay. 8, 669, 670, 671, and then everyone's going to put in password 1. Mine says, do you recognize your password? Yeah, my visuals are here. And when you make your main screen, then just let, let me know when everyone gets logged in, I guess. Oh, there's another option. It's capital T on password. Capital T on password? Oh. Capital T on teacher. Oh, okay, I'm teacher. Yep. Oh, I don't know if that makes a difference, but... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so do you... In the next one, do you have teacher... Capital T and teacher? Ooh, I'm in. <laughs> it's a miracle. Teacher... You do not recognize your look. I'm not recognizing. Teacher, 670. Yeah, do you know? And then... I did a capital T and teacher. Oh, and then the number one. I was teacher.
um, you can see this screen. You're going to see students, groups, and manage. You are going to spend almost all your time under the students tab. Okay, the students is where you're going to be able to benchmark. If you have older kids, this is where you're going to get your test tickets. And later when you're progress monitoring, you're going to progress monitor from this tab as well. The groups tab is going to give you the ability to pull group reports. If you want to look at norms tables, that's also under that tab. So group reports and the norms tables. Manage is going to be where you go in to create intervention. And if you are a manager on the account, that's also going to be where you can manage account details and things like that. So most of the time going to be spent in students. Up at the top, you're going to see a bell. Every time you've uploaded a report, you're going to see an orange exclamation point pop up on the bell, just like mine is. Yours is probably blank. Um, but every time you've uploaded a report, you'll have an orange exclamation point, um, at which point you could click it and open up any report you pulled by clicking a little paper clip next to it. It would download the PDF. Um, next to your name, which right now it says teacher and whatever name, number I gave you, um, but next to it is a settings button. You click that. Don't, don't change anything in it right now, but if you ever wanted to change your password when in your real account, that's where you could change it. And then under user rules, this is also where you could view what you are, what rules you have in the account. So you could see mine says manager, and then I'm also the owner of re-intervention group A and intervention 2. So um, this is where you could see what rules you have. Some, some very good news about the password. Um, at least for me, in the past with 1.0, if I forgot my password, um, it was such a pain to have to get the whoever the administrator was, administrator was to unlock it for me again. Um, and the same thing would happen when I was a manager over the account and had to unlock it for everyone all the time. Um, now, everybody's username is linked to their own email address. So if they get locked out of their account, you can easily just request to change your password from your email address so you don't have to get anyone else involved. So that's a good thing. Okay, um, at the very top right hand corner, you, probably, you don't want to click it right now, but that arrow is the log out button. So when you want to log out, sign out of your account, you click that arrow. Okay, well, this okay. Well, that was something that is really important that if you don't remember anything else today, I want you to know is this help button in the bottom right hand corner it says how can we help go ahead and click that and it should pull up a different screen unless you have your pop-up turned off and as it pulls up a different screen um, you can see it's kind of intuitive so i was on the benchmark screening screen um, on an info plus so it tried to come up with help on that um, so it tries to match whatever you need help with um, but also, you can just go, notice the first tab is getting started, so at the beginning, then benchmark screening, progress monitoring, so it kind of goes in order that way. I'm going to show you where you can print all your test material. So you could do it under benchmark screening, prepare, gather your material, okay, and print them that way. Or I just like to go to other resources, download test material. Okay, that's my favorite way get to everything I need to download. So I go to other resources, download, test materials. And when I click it, it brings me to this screen and I can decide what it is I need to print. Um, so at the beginning of the year, um, I can just do my progress, my benchmark book. And here's everything you would need for benchmarking. So there's kindergarten book for fall, for winter, for spring, first grade, and then um, if you're doing or reading fluency for any grade level, those are all here. Same thing, you've got your early numeracy, and then at the bottom, I mean, you've got your web, all your um, classic measures like maze or MCAT, you're using those. 
And for Kinder First, I just like to download this zip file actually, and it can just pull everything at once. So I can print Kinder First for fall, winter, spring at the same time. But it's up to you, obviously. And this is what I was talking about in terms of being mindful about printing color because you look at like your kindergarten, you can see a lot of things are in color. You just have to make sure that you print the ones that are in color and color. Um, and you can, if you guys need it, you can print that through Pearson, but I personally recommend trying to get it printed at your own school just if you have the ability, just because that pure tension ended up being expensive for no reason. So, <laughs> but, you know, if you did need to print it, you can pierce it. But, uh, those are just for the benchmarking. If you wanted a progress monitoring book, you go here. Um, I'm not sure if you have access to this, to, to, to the dyslexia screen or not, if you've got to purchase it. If you did purchase it, then when you get into your real account, it's going to be available here. Under students, it's going to be dyslexia screen. And yeah. you can just click yeah. it and go to it. Okay. I'll just tell you that now. Okay. Um, I just saw that it's in there. It's not sure if you have purchased that or not. doesn't tell me what it's you guys have in That would be kind of a scary. Yeah. Our is the oh, sorry. medical doctor's yeah. Okay, well, that's so something so. I have to look at in the future. Oh, Honestly, yeah. you can look at it on here. It's just a checklist. So it just, it's nice because it links to all their data, but it's just a basic screener. Obviously you can't diagnose this child with dyslexia or anything like that. It's just, okay, are there red flags? And then you can forward that to sites or whoever would need it. All right, so just remember where the help file is. One more thing, and then I'll get off the help area and actually go to the accounts again. Um, under download, there is a quick step guide for managers and quick step guide for teachers. I would really recommend coming back here when you have questions because the quick step guide for teachers, for example, just make it super easy because you're not going to remember everything I say today once you start doing it. No. Um, and we might not get to everything today either. So if you can't remember how to do something, go over here to the quick step guide and just pull those and it has nice quick PDF that you can walk through. So it's three thoughts of what you need. Like this is only one page, so you can know how to do that and walk through it, okay? All right, so that's the help file. Let's go back to the main screen where it says benchmark comparison. Anytime you wanna see your students on here, it makes you kind of click view and refresh when you first get onto the account. Now for today, um, first, first off, I'm going to show you a sample, so don't feel like you have to follow with me. Um, you can if you want, but it's not going to show up the exact same on your screen. Um, then I'll give you the opportunity to assess the group on here. So if you don't have the same, where it says elementary school, you're going to be in a different account. But I'm just going to show you this real quick because there's already some data here, okay? Uh, so here's my list of students. Uh, some things you can change on here are the page size. So if you want to see all your students at once on a page, you can change your page size. Again, you guys don't have, you're not looking at the same class. Um, but something I wanted to talk about are these color bands. So in 1.0, you usually use tiers, at least I did. Um, if you use tiers, it would probably just would show red, yellow, green. You can still look at it like that if you like, okay? Um, but Inkwork Plus has it set up to be in five color bands. The legend down here at the bottom explains them. So your, if your student shows up orange, and this is for their composite score, okay? So if they take the, if they take the tests that are required for the benchmark period, then they'll get a composite score or a color band right next to their name. So for percentile bands, it's going to be orange if it's below the 10th percentile. The 11th to the 25th percentile is going to be yellow. If they're in the average range, it's going to be green, 26 to the 74th. Above average, 76 or 89th. And well above average, it's going to be this dark blue. Okay, so that's just a little indicator 
um, how your student performed on their benchmark assessment, um, but it also shows you for individual assessment. So this is something that I don't like it looking like this personally when I see, um, okay, this is letter word sound fluency and the score is 73. Okay, 73 means nothing to me. I don't know if that score is good, if it's bad. Um, so I like to go over here where it says display on the left hand side and change it to percentile. I put you in refresh. And now next to each student's name, I have more of an idea of how they did on each assessment. Okay, so I can see Noah here was in the first percentile, but then I can actually see that he was in the first percentile across the board for each assessment. Um, also, you're going to see pink exclamation points pop up next to students who are at risk as well. We'll go into that later, but if they have a pink exclamation point next to their name, it means progress already probably recommended because they scored below average in at least one area. Um, so I want to let you guys have a chance to actually practice the assessment. So if you would like to, of uh, course, it says roster, erase whatever is there, and I want you to type training, but don't type the whole, just type the beginning of the word training, and wait a second, and you'll get a drop down. Sorry for this autocorrect, I need to turn it off, but you'll get a drop down of classes, and I'd like you to click training class 1J, as in jelly. Training class 1J, and then it should come up, and you can click view and refresh, and then you can see your student. Okay, was everyone able to do that? Just let me know if you were not, and I can help out. Um, but you should see your students, and there should be no assessments done for them. It should be pretty blank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend to be, let's say, I'll, I could be student 686. I don't think anyone with that student. So what you would do is benchmark them. So here's your, normally this would be your student's last name and first name, and here's your student list. Yeah. The benchmark is that you go to the benchmark assessment, you would first click the paper pencil next to their name, and this would come up. Do you want to administer a letter word sound fluency? If you do, you click yes. If you don't want to administer that one, you say no. It's to bonus presentation. I'm going to say yes. It should automatically pop up with the instructions. So this is exactly what you would read to the student. You can click through all these instructions and read them. This isn't usually an issue for benchmarking, but for progress monitoring, sometimes you want to make sure you have the right form in front of the student. If you need to do that, you can click preview, and it'll show you the paper that should be shown in front of the student. So you can make sure um, the student has the right assessment in front of them, and you can click exit preview. When you're ready to get the assessment, you would click begin. Notice in the right hand corner the timer automatically starts counting down. Okay. If you click and on I'm supposed to mark once the student is getting incorrect. That should show up in pink. If I want to see more than one page at a time, I can put this box next to the one that's in white and it would show me two pages. Notice um, it does go to the PVC words down here at the bottom and they get there. Then you click, and then I'm just for time's sake going to stop the timer. To stop it, you would click the uh, square up at the top right hand corner, and you're going to have a list of options. So I could start it over. So beginning of the year, that could be, you know, a kid started telling you about their dog, or they fell out of their hair, or whatever it happened, you could click start over. You need to just start the, the test over. Um, you could discard the form if you needed to for some reason. If you they just like in the past where we had discontinue rules, we still do, and there's a manual on how can we help the administration scoring guide. There's also a video that you can watch before administering to find out what when that is. But let's say that it's 
10 in a row. If they got 10 incorrect in a row, you can press this continue so you don't have to wait for the timer to run out. Um, you could also, if they did it with really fast, you could say student finish more. Okay, and then you can score it without having to wait for the time to go out as well. I'm going to press this continue. One good thing, another good thing that they've done now is if you made a mistake in the marking, you can fix it. So if you didn't need to be needed to click something and the time ran out, you can click it, unclick it. If you click the wrong last letter, you can undo that as well and fix that. Um, so when everything is the way that you want it to look, you can make two choices. You can choose to click score. That's going to bring it back to the main page. So when I click score, that's if I want to give, say I want to give my whole class letter word count fluency on that day. I click score and then I pull my next student, give them the same assessment. So I could go through my whole class roster. Or if I just have this one student in front of me and I want to give all the assessments to this one child at once, then I can say score and continue. And then it's going to give me the next assessment for that child. So depending on your needs, you can choose either way. I'm going to click score and continue for now. Notice it says how many correct, how many incorrect, the accuracy rate. And if I want to print the results right now, I could. I could say print results and it will print this exact page as is. Um, otherwise, I just click OK. If I, and it's going to give me phoneme segmentation unless I wanted to skip it and I could have skipped on to word read fluency. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK. Oh, and of course my screen froze. Sometimes these sample accounts, by the way, if your screen freezes, that's normal for these sample accounts. We just have so many people using it, and um, if that happens, I would just say log out and log back in. Okay, so normally, if I click OK, the screen should just pop up, but I'm going to probably have to log back in again to, I'm sure, knock me out. Okay. So we just struggle with the, the assessment. So I'm going to go back to training class. One J. There we go. Even refresh. And I see several of you given an assessment, so that's great. Um, I would like everyone to try to give a few assessments right now. Um, if you. I would make sure everyone at least administers the oral reading fluency assessment um, because that one is required in first grade for the composite. So the reason I picked first grade is because only the oral reading fluency is required for the composite. The other grades have multiple assessments, but for some reason they just chose oral reading fluency as an indicator of whether the child is on grade level or not for first grade. So you can see always the one that's in teal are the required measures. So, get at least a oral reading fluency, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, one thing that you might notice, like on phony segmentation, if you're administering that one, if you click everything and nothing happens, um, that's because you have to go to the top corner and say student finish the form because that was done time. So, go ahead and try those assessments and reach out to me in the chat box if you have any questions.
Auditory vocabulary, yes. So the only one required for the and I said this sentence before, but if possible, um, especially on the oral reading fluency, um, score very low for the student, so it'll be easier to create a progress monitoring goal. Oh. Mine's probably Early numeracy, 
you and our friends, mm-hmm. and you should be able to see your students' names. So, like, if you were, I should have said this before, but if you were teacher 666, you could decide that that student 666. If you did someone else, that's fine. Remember to get the ORS score, you do have to give two oral reading fluency measures. So it'll say next up at the top, and you have to administer the second one because it takes the average. Okay, if you did give two and you click score, um, it sometimes just takes the second. So that's possible. Um, I'm not sure. I'll go through mine at least so you can see. Look at it in tiers. 
so the school and district aren't going to work for this year until you have at least one year worth of data in your system. Um, but you can always look at it in terms of peers, and you choose, and you'll see your red, yellow, green like you always have. So I personally, I, I like seeing the national percentile, but obviously it's very easy to move back in between. Um, All right, so I'm going to jump to a different class now, and you're not going to, you're teachers right now, like I made each of you a teacher over class one day. Okay. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready to move, or if you have any questions about this. I don't know how to get back to that. No, I, I don't did get back. I clicked on it. I'm happy to wait as long as you need me to. I just don't want you to think I'm not doing anything right <laughs> here. <laughs> so, just let me know. Will I turn to and roll over into the same platform? Um, unfortunately, no. So, you can. Input 1.0 is still available to go back and pull data from for the next few months, I believe. Um, but after that, it is going away. Um, so, you do have to set up a new system on here. So, however you set it up in the past, um, it should be the same. You should not be happy to manually enter in all of your students. Um, if you manually enter them in, in the past, um, you could still manually enter them, but um, there's lots of ways for automatic rostering, and there's um, a good good videos that I have on those that I can send anyone who needs them. So walk you through how to do that. Really, it should be. Oh, there should be an <laughs> IT person at your school who's usually in charge of that. If it is you, um, the video is really helpful. Okay, I'll make sure to send you the video for automatic rostering and I'll send you manual just in case, but hopefully you can do the automatic rostering. Okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. go for it. Five minute break. Um, so we'll take a 10 minute break and still think uh, oh, okay. our system will come back in 10 minutes. So she said there's a way How to- How did you get or just let me know when you want to come back, I guess. So it looks like that. Mine doesn't look like that. Mine doesn't look like that either. This is her screen. This is the webinar. Oh. I'm on the right. webinar right now. Um, I, I have no idea. Oh. Oh, so did you, oh. With, were you doing a test? Okay. So mine yeah. looks like this. It's got all the training yeah, students in it, whatever we put oh. in there. That's all the data we have. Yeah. <laughs> She's got, that's the sample. Yeah, yeah that's or, her. Yeah. Just take That's just her webinar. Yeah. Right. So, so snacks, friends. Okay. So Molly, you understood her to say that there's a way to input all of those yeah, students. Yeah, that would be something. Okay. But you we'll, should be able to do this. We'll probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll probably have to because I always. I have to manually enter and delete students coming in. Okay. New teachers, I so delete them out and enter new teachers in. I'm guessing I still do that. I don't know. So I think if Mary does ours though. Mary Pisky has automatically entered ours in. Or some kind of like upload that you're pretty sure she's done that. And I've done a couple of students here and there that were missed along the way. Like if, if, Kathy was really like, I mean, if I'm pretty sure she's at the beginning of the year, anybody at the beginning of the year, then we could use ours. Which, that's yeah, that's what I've done in the house. house. Yeah, that, that's yeah. correct. I mean, it's right in the teacher's letter, right? Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I kind of thought it'd be a well, little bit easier.
one, Emmeline, remember that was in John's class? Uh -huh. And then Kinley, so yeah, yeah, down here and there, but Duncan. I didn't have to. I was hoping I was the quick start. We can and download those quick starts and help them. See, when I started, I was doing this.
Yeah. I feel the same way. I just feel like I'm... Well, if you feel that way, then all of my shows are like that. Times 100. <laughs> I, I feel like I've got to frantically write everything down. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to write stuff down, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just I haven't heard from him like all summer. Like I haven't seen much on Facebook or anything from him. I freaking missed out on his shirts and I really wanted one and I can't miss him that guy at Woodman's for the Lisa shirts. Oh, I was like, I was only like... Did you get one? Just because Chris was there and I was like, oh, are you there? I missed all her messages. I had turned him on up. But. And then he was there yesterday from like five to six, but then all of a sudden I got home from football and I was tired and then my husband also was home and I was like, oh, I'll like, just come back. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't planning on getting one more time off, but since she was there, I, was like, oh, I think they're lovely. Mm -hmm. It's very fortunate. Are you going to So he gets the funeral for Well, that's what that's told us last year, right?
Yeah, they start tomorrow. Um, Katie English, do you know who she is? She has a great to be a first grader. She's in our, in our Girl Scout troop. Um, but she, over the summer, I was like, yeah, I'll, uh, she's like, I watch kids now if you ever need me, and I know who Girl Scout. Oh, so I she's going to make kids this week, and then Monday, Tuesday, next week. She just lives in our Girl Scout vision. She is going to be second grader. And a fifth grader and a seventh grader too. She's got some older girls. Um, <laughs> what? Does that look like a baby? Oh, yeah. doesn't look like a baby. And she lives like four houses away. Nice. Yeah. 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 What's easy one like? Do you live by someone who has kids? Like, Actually, this was benchmarking for kinder and first. I had to like 
Um, notice next to my, on my screen, I have a trash can next to each one. Um, I'm a manager in the account, so I could delete a score. You as a teacher, probably that's not turned on. I recommend not turning that on for teachers, um, just to create some more validity. But remember now, you can correct everything in the account before you click score. So there should be no reason you would need to delete the score. But if it needed to be, you could tell the manager and they could just delete it. Okay. Um, no. Just let me know if you have any questions about this screen and this piece here. The place you print this, remember, is under How Can We Help, and you can go to other resources, print test materials. So we're not going to go into our progress monitoring really today, but I just want you to be aware. So when you come back to it later, you'll know where to look. You could click this exclamation point, and it would recommend what you could progress monitor in, and you would click this little plus button to get there, or you could look under the assessment. So these students also the more reading fluency. I can click the plus sign next to it and create a goal. Notice these ones over here are all gray. That's because these students all scored in the average or above average range. So there's no need to progress monitor them. Uh, but if the score is black like this, or if the plus sign is black, uh, then that's also another way it's recommended you could progress monitor for that student. Um, now, it seems like survey level assessments are something that you guys have used in the past and would like to use, so I just want to review that really quick while we're on this screen. Now, this is another piece of information. Um, just stop me if you need to. But, um, so, you benchmark all your kids, you get your data, and you look, can look at the breakdown. If you want to view all your students from here, and how they score, you could select all from this sidebar over on the left. You can select all the kids that you want to be in the report. And then in the top right hand corner, you click export. Okay, and you can say benchmark summary report. Or if you want to view the individual student reports, you could say batch individual student reports, and you could pick from this list over here. But I'm just going to say benchmark summary report. Okay, and when that's done, remember it's going to go in that cell. So I wait a few minutes. Um, I can also pull the individual student one as well. The batch option is nice because you can pull all your students at one time instead of having to go in each individual student. Um, also, for these individual reports, again, once you have data in your system, then you can worry about this. Um, but no, now it does let you customize this to how you want it to look. So you can choose which things show up or don't show up, which is kind of nice. All right. So there's an orange exclamation point up here in the bell, so I'm going to click it. And I'm going to pull my benchmark comparison report. Okay. Here it is. Okay, so there's not so much data in here because we really didn't get through all the assessments. So don't worry about that. Um, but here's a report that would break it down for your students. So break it down for you so you could see where your students are falling. So I could see, oh my goodness, okay, I have one student who fell in the well below average range. I have three students in the average, three well above average. So you could see the breakdown of your class and then it'll break it down by each score, um, or each percentile, each score. If there's been a goal set up with them, Instead of that plus sign, you'll see a little goal bar that'll say how they're progressing towards their goals. Um, it also now gives a left side level for RCVM or oral reading fluency. Okay, so this report, when you pull it, will give you a breakdown of everything you got from benchmarking your kids. And I'm going to just talk about survey level assessing with this. So one more time though, to pull a report, I selected all. I went to the top right hand corner where it says export and I chose benchmark summary report so I could see the summary of all the benchmarking scores. If I just want individual report, I could select which students I wanted to be on that and I could say batch individual report 
and I can pick from one of these. If we have time, we'll look at reports, but I really think get your data in the system and then rate out these different reports when they, so you can see them with real student data in it. So anyway, I can look from this screen or I can just view here, um, but the recommendation with an Plus Plus is if your student scores below average, so in the 11th to the 25th percentile, then you should probably progress monitor them on grade level. Okay, so they're below grade level, but they're still within a range that they could get on grade level. So let's, so you would create a goal for them to hopefully pull them up to grade level um, by middle of the year, into the year, whatever you choose. If the student, on the other hand, scores below, you know, the 10th percentile, then that's when we might want survey level assessment. That means they're well below at grade level and it might be beneficial to figure out what grade they're scoring at and create a goal off of that. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. If you forget, do not worry. You can just go to this How Can We Help and there's a, a walkthrough basically on how to do it, okay? So this student, they scored in the well below average range on oral reading fluency. Now, in real life, I would definitely want to test them on these other assessments first because it might be as easy as making a goal for them on letter words down fluency. Maybe they just need more practice with their sounds and then they'll be on grade level. Uh, but let's just pretend we gave them all these assessments and they scored very low across the board. And I wanted to test them on a kindergarten level instead. Maybe I needed to give them letter naming fluency, okay, or initial sound. So if I wanted to do that, first I just need to select that student. So the way I select the student in the account is next to their name, I can click this little I. Okay, when I click the I, it's going to pull up that individual student's profile. And here I can see all their information. So anytime you click the little I next to a student's name, it's going to bring them to this, bring you to this screen, and you'll be able to see how they did in literacy, how they did in math. Um, Another thing you can see in AIMS Plus is their growth across um, the different benchmark periods. So where it says SGP, that means student growth percentile. So how much did the student grow from fall to winter on oral reading fluency? It would tell you right here. And it might, if it said 1.0, then that would mean that they grew at one per one word per week from fall to winter. Okay, so that's going to be your student growth percentile. Again, once you have data in the system, then you can analyze what you're seeing. But um, just remember that's going to be there. All right, so I want to test this student at kindergarten level. The way I do that, once I have them selected by clicking the I next to their name, is click the drop down under student. And Notice right here it says sample 674. That would normally say your student's first and last name to tell you that they're selected. And then you have all these options under that. So I can see their student profile, individual benchmark, individual monitoring assets they're being progress monitored, or snapshot skills plan. These are all reports. And then at the very, very bottom it says survey level assessment. If I want to survey level assess this kid, which would mean finding what grade level they're actually performing at and creating maybe a more attainable goal for them. I would click survey level assessment. And now it should have the student's name up here. And if they had any survey level assessments in the past, if I click view and refresh, it would pop up here. But I've never given them one. So to give them one, I go up in the right hand corner and it, there's a plus sign that says new. I would just click it, and I get to decide what do I want to survey level assessment on. I said letter naming fluency. Okay, so I find L and S, and it automatically tells me what form. Um, so to do this, I would just need to make sure I have my materials printed ahead of time. Um, I recommend just having a binder at your school that has all the measures in it, so that if someone needs to do a survey level assessment, they could just borrow that binder instead of printing all the new materials. Just for that, just to maybe see if they're reading at that level or meet that level. 
right, so lemonade, let's see, kindergarten, form four. When I have that pulled up, I click a set. And just like before when we we're benchmarking, um, the screen would pop up. I could preview the form, read the instructions, click begin, and I could administer the kids' kindergarten assessment. Okay, I'm going to click this continue for time sake. Yes, for it. Shows me I can print this through, print the results right here if I want it. And then I click OK. And here we go. Under this student now, it has their survey level assessment. Okay. Um, now, normally you want this to be in the yellow range. You want them to be scoring in the 11th to 25th percentile for them to be, for it to be a good place to set a goal. But if they're in first grade, this is, and they're scoring this low in kinder, this is probably the starting place. So, again, up to your discretion. But you could choose to make a progress monitoring goal from this screen just by clicking that little plus sign. So, and if you didn't want it, if you felt like, okay, then maybe this isn't a good, good for them, let me try initials down, you could just go up here, you could pick a different measure, and you could assess this. The same goes if you have a fifth grader and you think you're not sure what grade level they were at, you can keep testing down until you found their just right level. Okay, so once it's yellow, that's a good level to that they're still below grade level, but not so far below grade level that they can't um, reach their goal. So you can select create a goal from anywhere between the 11th and the 25th percentile is usually the recommendation. So you can put as many 30 level assessments as you want here and then create a goal from this spot. Now you also can view this survey level assessment on the student's profile screen as well. So that's going to be viewable. When you go to the student's profile now, it's going to show any survey level assessments that they received right here. Also, if you create a progress monitoring goal for the student, it would be viewable from the monitor screen as well, whether it you created it in a normal way or from the survey level assessment side. Do you guys have any questions about that piece? Everything else. All right. Um, so now I'm going to move on then to the test tickets if you guys are okay with that. So remember, these survey level assessments can be done at any grade level for any student, and that's how you assign it. You first select the student, and then you go down to survey level assessments and pick which ones you want. Okay, so now under student profile, I'm going to go to benchmark comparison screen again. And I'm going to move on to a class that's, let's say, fourth grade. So you guys, if you went to that right now, it's not going to work because you're not in the class um, at the fourth grade level. You're at your teacher over the first grade. So just go ahead and watch me now, and then if you guys want to try it, I can give you guys login for fourth grade. So you go to your class, and you would have your list of students. And notice instead of the paper pencil, you now have a ticket next to the student's name. That's because they're going to be going into test now to take the assessment. For benchmarking and for progress monitoring, unless it's on oral reading fluency, or unless you had to give them a survey level assessment um, that was a kindergarten or first grade measure. All right, next to the student's name, on the ticket, you can click the ticket, and what would pop up is the student's username and password. Your names and usernames and passwords are going to look better than that because it's not going to be automatically generated like this account. Um, it should make more sense, like maybe the student's last name or the student's number or something like that. Okay? But the student's username and password would be listed there. And it's also going to tell you status. It's going to say locked or unlocked. If I click unlock, it's going to make that student's ticket green. That means when they get on, when they log in in TestNav, if they put in their username and password, it's going to allow them to take this reading test. If it's blue, 
when those students log in, it'll let them log in, but they won't be able to click the test. It'll just be grayed out until you've unlocked it. Now, normally, you're not going to want to unlock each test ticket. That might happen occasionally if you just need to give one student a makeup test, like if they weren't there that day, you need to give them the test, or they need to finish it, whatever the reason may be. But normally, you're probably going to want to give all your students their test at the same time. So the way you would do that is select all on the left-hand side, and then click this in the top right-hand corner, click unlock or lock, and just click the unlock. When student's test is unlocked, then all their tickets are going to be green. Remember that you'll have to do that for reading and for math, okay? So you could choose to unlock them both at the same time, or you could decide, I want my students to take the reading test today, and next week in computer lab, they'll take the math section. So you can split it up. They are separate assessments, so you have to unlock both assessments. This is just for benchmarking, so to unlock, you just simply select all, top right hand corner, unlock, or click on the individual test ticket to unlock that one student, however you want to do it. Now, I did say the username and passwords are available when you click on the ticket. I would almost, I would only use that if I had maybe a new date come in and, or someone lost their card and couldn't remember their username and password. Um, so that's just if you want to look up one specific kid, but generally you want to print all your test tickets at once. So let me show you how to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So under student, from the drop down, you go to test assignment list. Okay, and then it should have, you have to go into your class. So this training account keeps defaulting back to elementary. It doesn't really matter which class you're in, but I mean, in your case, it'll automatically have like your last name or your school, and then you can filter it however you want over here. Um, so this is elementary school class that it just defaulted back to second grade through fourth grade. Actually, looks better because it has the student's name, and it's showing all tests. If I just want a specific one, I can filter it. I noticed that there's some repeats here because it's giving me their reading and math. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry, this, is, this training account is not cooperating very much today. All right, so I'm just going to go back into our training class, hopefully. So I went to test assignment list, and then I need to make sure my roster is correct. So I'm going to put in my correct class I was looking at, which was 4J. Okay, click it, and I can just do view and refresh, and I should have all my students listed, and at that point I can select all, and the top right hand corner I click export, and I, would, I can do test assignment list if I just want to print everything at once, like this page that I'm seeing. Or if I want to press tick, print tickets, which is what I normally do, I go to test assignment ticket, and then I can choose, okay, do I want to print the tickets in a box format, a label format, or a strip format. The box format is about <laughs> six names per page. A label format is if you want to print it out on an Avery 5160 label. And then the strip format are like you could just use a paper cutter and swipe um, down little strips of paper with their username and password. So I like label format, Avery 5160 label. I'm going to click that one. And it should go straight up to this, this little bell, and I can print my ticket. So this is an administrative task that would need to be done for all students who are taking their test on the computer before you actually benchmark your kid. So the username and password is the same for reading and math. It's the same when they're being program monitored. It never changes. So you just need to print it once, or if you get a new student, you need to print that one or write it down. Um, so here's just an example. This is the label one. 
take these on note cards and my class will be ready to go as long as I want to lock the tent. I think you guys can pray. Are you guys good with um, it up. that? Oh. You want to try it yourself? I think that's what she meant. You guys so can no, every teacher can print the tickets that their uh, teacher over. Yes. So if you're a third grade teacher, you can print all of the third grade tickets for your class. Yeah. Yeah. But the admin does have, that's an option. The admin could print them for everyone in the school if, if you felt like it's going to be too much for teachers at the beginning of the year. Um, depends on how nice you can be. Um, there is a good quick set PDF on how to print your test ticket. So that's something you can print out for teachers as well. You guys want to try to go on here? Um, if you do, you, I could, like if you're a teacher, then I would, you could go here, you could put the, you could write down the username and password, and then you could go on the test tab and actually practice to see what the fourth grade assessment looks like. So that's up to you guys if you want to do that or not. Yeah. Well, we've got so much other things to learn. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, if you decide you want to do that another day, let me know and I can give you uh, usernames and passwords. Um, they go in and then test the assessment. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the sample class so you can see what things will look like once the tests are done. Great. So just like before with the ticket, like with the paper pencil one. Um, if the student finished their test, it's going to get the battery next to it. There's going to be this little lock if they finished all the assessments that are available. That same thing will happen with kindergarten and first grade. Now, if there's not, a, if they're not finished with their assessment and they log out at some point, um, you can you might just have to unlock it. It might show like a little lock next to their name, and you have to click it and click on. Resume actually, and that should that should be in the um, slide somewhere. But um, it's just so that they can't log in at home or something like that. You actually have to unlock it for them uh, so that they can finish their assessment. Okay, um, have you guys used TestNap before? Yes. Yes. Some of them TestNap for hard testing. Oh. Yes. We haven't. Okay, is anyone using that now? Some have teachers have, some have not. Specialist technology. Okay, so I just want to show you uh, how to navigate that real quick. I'm not going to take it test, but I just want to show you what screen you need to be on to test your kids. I might need to change screen, it's probably going to lock me out. So tell her no, just say no. All right, so you should see this screen. Where are we? I think you're seeing my Sorry. screen now that has like your chat um, yeah. box and everything else on it. She's just up there. Um, if you don't see this screen, so this would be great. They can put in their username and password, they can sign in, they'll be good to go. If you don't see this screen, you need to go to choose a different customer. And you need to make sure you click Age Web Plus. So what I noticed, like I was in Chicago, or outside of Chicago last week, like that. doing an on-site training. So it's not that far from you guys. Um, but when they got on their system, it automatically went to this screen that said Illinois. And then everyone was trying to put in their username and password, and it doesn't work. So you really just need to make sure if it goes to this screen, because a lot of you use it for state testing or something else, um, that you go to choose a different customer, and it really needs to be the one that says Age Club Plus. Okay, so if it doesn't, if the kids can't get logged in for some reason, just make sure they're on this screen first, because that's usually the first, the main issue. All right. I'm 
I'm going to go back now to the other monitor. Hopefully you can see my PowerPoint. If you can't, let me know. Okay, so just to review, this is in your slide on what you're supposed to use digital record forms for. These are the recommendations, so just make sure that you have the things that need to be printed. Printed in color, um, the discontinue and wait time rules, those are all found in the How Can We Help resources and the administration scoring guide, and I'm also going to send you links to the videos if you want to watch those. You can just skip the ones that you're not using and watch the video on the ones that you are. Obviously, you want to have a quiet and private testing environment if possible, but with our younger kids, that's not always possible, so we just can do the best we can. And you do want to make sure the iPad or whatever you're using does have a reliable internet connection. All right, so we did these things. I'm just going to talk to the online assessment process. The online assessment process for test now. now. So you want to make sure you get the tickets printed, you unlock the test, you get the students logged in to take the test, and then once you've got that done, you get your results immediately in test now, or in book plus, excuse me. Okay, so here's some things to think about. You have to make sure that you have the newest version of TestNav installed on each computer. You want to know how to access it. So it does say place dividers between each student. Um, that is optional. Um, just for something, a consideration, because at the benchmarking assessment, um, all of the assessments are the same. So you could have students looking at each other's computers. Uh, so if you have dividers, awesome. If you don't have dividers, you can stagger students. Um, or another thing I've done is have students I assign reading and math to them at the same time. And then when they're logged in, I say, okay, you do reading, you do math, reading, math, reading, math, so that that way they're work the person next to them is not working on the same thing as them at the same time. So this is something to, to think about. Okay, um, if we have time, I'll keep you guys usernames and passwords so you can practice unlocking it yourself. Um, and then at that point you'd also have, you could go in and test nav on your own someday if you'd like to try that. All right, here's another tip is that you want to make sure you have headphones working for each student. Okay, so that's important because a lot of these questions are read to the student out loud. Um, for even for like for vocabulary, everything was read to them. For math, it reads all of the problems, and then for reading, it still reads the instructions. So you want to make sure you have working headphones. Oh my goodness! You see my monitor? <laughs> oh wow! I've been going through all, all of these slides. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So I went through all of these slides. <laughs> okay. Um, I basically stuff we already looked at, but have you see which slide? These slides are the ones you have. So making sure you have headsets. This is where I was at. Um, if the students know how to adjust those headsets during testing. Okay, another thing is that, um, oh, this isn't the slide that I thought it was, um, but you want to make sure that you introduce the test session with a scripted intro. Um, so that's all available in the test materials as well under the How Can We Help. Um, and there's a, if you are getting the online assessment, second grade on, or the test nav assessment, second grade on up, um, then there's a video for you to watch as well that just talk about how to read the introduction to the students properly, when you get them a pencil versus not, all of that kind of information. And um, obviously, depending on your group, you may need 
more than one person in there monitoring behavior, or you may not. It just really depends on you and your group mainly. <laughs> All right. Students log in. Oh, I've got Hand out the paper before the test that provides a simple when it starts. Some kids need more assistance than others. Make take into consideration your group size. It's a benchmark. Now, the students have an idea or five or four plans for the reading measures. It will allow you to turn on contrast, magnifier, or show highlights. Oh, and answer masking. Um, you do turn that on from the login screen when they first log in. So you can turn that on or off before they begin the test. Um, and all students will get the text to speech for vocabulary, concepts, and applications, and then the directions for everything else. Okay, so you have these slides that can help remind you how to resume or restart the test. Um, so this is a good screenshot of what that would look like. So if a student got locked out because they didn't have time to finish the test the day before, they're going to have a little lock next to their name. And all you do is click the lock, and this little screen would pop up, and you can just click resume. Or if you need to start them over for some reason, you can start the test over. So do teachers have a different login? When students are done, this is the screen that will show up for them. It'll say sign out complete. Thank you for using test now. To log them, if like, they don't see the screen, then they didn't finish. Okay. okay, so we kind of mentioned this, uh, but here's the to layout of again what all those colors, the colors mean in Ames Plus Plus. So it's just breaking it down to five um, different categories, depending on their score. This is a screen that's showing their rate of improvement between periods. Um, so. I was kind of talking about this, but it didn't show it. Um, you have, okay, if the student was scoring in the average range in the fall, if I want them to still be in the average range in the winter, notice this is fall to winter rate of improvement, then I would need them to improve a, at least one word per week or one letter per week or whatever the assessment is. Okay, if I want them to move above average, and I would need them to have a higher rate of improvement than this, higher than 1.02. If they have a rate lower than 1.02, they're going to fall in the below average range or in the well below average range. The same for your kids who are scoring below grade level, you're going to need them to have a higher rate of improvement so that they can get out of that below average range into the average or above average. So this gives you an indicator for fall to winter. And then also from winter to spring, if you want to see the whole year's rate of improvement that they would need to have, no. it's listed over here on the right-hand side. So now I'm going to show you real quick in the account where you can find um, not only where you can find the scores as well as the rate of improvement. And Influx Plus really does this for you. Um, so when you do go to create a goal, you don't have to do any calculations anymore. It'll calculate it for you. But if you have something specific, like if you say, I need my kid to be at the 30th percentile because that's what's in their IEP goal, then I'm going to, where I'm going to show you now, the norm tables would be where you can go to find that. Let me just get out of this PowerPoint again. All right, back to this screen. And you guys can do this as well. Um, even as a first grade teacher, you can have access to it. So. If you're logged in, if you're not, it's okay, you can just follow along. Under students, that's where we do benchmarking, progress monitoring, our survey level assessments, all of that. We're going to go to groups. This is where you can pull all the group reports, but right now we're going to look at the norm tables. So from the drop down, you would go to norm table, so groups, norm tables. And from this screen, you can choose any assessment you want to look at. So maybe I'll stick with oral reading fluency, since I, that's one that every grade level would probably use. And I can select what grade level do I want to look at it on. I can choose all grades, I can go to first, fourth, whatever I want. And then I click view and refresh, and here's the cut score. 
So it's showing the average, they need to score between 19 and 54 at the beginning of the year in the fall. In winter, that would need to look like between 51 and 97. I'm sorry, in spring. And winter would be 36 through 79. If I need more information than that, there's this toggle over here that says first to 99th percentile. I could turn that on, review and refresh, and then I could find exactly what I need my students to work be. So if the IEP says 30th percentile, I go to 30th, and it says they need 20 in the fall, a score of 38 in the winter, and a score of 56 or 55 in the spring. Okay, so that's where you could look at the specifics. If you don't want specifics, you can just look here, and you can see also the rate of improvements that we need to correlate with those scores. I'll give you guys a second to get on there and look at it. When you guys want to move on, just tell me. I'm trying to frantically write so I can get it over here. Technology does not always cooperate with us, so some of you are able to look at it, great. If your computer is not working, feel free to look on to a friend's computer or just look at mine and we can hopefully you can have an opportunity to practice that later. So those usernames and passwords I gave you um, would still work next week too. So uh, feel free to use, go in there as much as you need to. Um, and that way, you, before you actually touch real students, you can um, kind of play around in the sandbox account. Also, if you guys want your own account, sandbox account, I could give your school that as well. So just let me know about that. All right, so River under North Table, under Groups is where you get the North Table. And it keeps kicking me out of this account too. So we got lots of technology. All right, go back up there to slide. All right, so in terms of navigating within Eastwood Plus, I kind of already, we've done that a lot, but I just want you to think about um, these different roles that you might have. So you could be a teacher under the account. So in that case, you would have the ability to test any students in your own class, or you could be a teacher over, let's say, five reading classes. In that case, you could assess any of the kids in those classes. If you were a manager, you'd be able to see all of the teachers' classes of your entire school, and you'd be able to test any student in that school. So a lot of times, if you are like a special education teacher, I recommend um, just going, going in and being a school manager so that it's just a little bit easier for you to access all of the students. Um, another thing you can do, I'm not going to show you right now how to do it, um, but you can write it down into something you're interested in. It's called My Student Groups. And if you are like a school site or a special education teacher, you could make a group. Um, so you could, your manager could do it, or um, you could do it as your manager, but you, you could have your group. Like you just name your group whatever you want, like it could even be like a class name or something like that, and then you could pull kids from all different classes to be a part of that group. Um, and they'd still be on their own teacher's roster, so you'd also be able to access them without having to go into each class. So if you want to do that, it's called um, My Student Group, and there's a nice quick set PDF on how to do that in the help file if you decide to do that once the school year starts. The district, the school reporters, the district reporters, that's mainly for 
people that you don't want actually testing your students. So if you have a superintendent or something like that who wants to view the data, um, you can add them as reporters. You probably don't want them to be in their managers or they could mess with your data. So <laughs> something to think about. All right. So here is actually the measures overview. I guess it is in your account. I just went over it earlier. So you have this page, early literacy, early numeracy, reading, and math. Okay, but it doesn't show you the pictures. So if you want the pictures, I'll send that to you um, after this of the individual measures and what they are. I also have, I might have a good summary report that next to each measure it says what it is like a little explanation um, maybe that would be even more useful they could print it and have it all together yes, please. all right so we did all of this okay great i'll make sure to send that to you guys we looked into this i actually think we already went through these slides maybe i ended up have order on <coughs> Sorry guys. Okay, so group is student benchmark screening reports. This is just gonna show you some screenshots of what that could look like. Okay, so once you've benchmarked all of your kids. And this is another thing I can send you a good, really nice um, handout on yes. that has a picture of each um, report you could pull. It, it has an explanation, what are these? report and then it has directions on how to pull up each report. So I will make sure to send you that because really you don't want to worry too much about the reports so you have all the information. Yes, so I can send you guys a lot of handouts and just remember anything I don't send you, if you go to that help file and pull quick step PDF, almost anything you need to show another teacher or an assistant how to do, there's a one or two page that has screenshots you could give them. Okay, so under groups, you could pull group reports once you have your data. I can show you those, but there might be screenshots that have more information in it, so let's just look at those right now. Um, so this benchmark distribution report would be good to pull for your individual class or for your school. You can pull all the grade levels, and it's kind of nice because it breaks down how many students fell within each category within that grade level or within that class. So you could see, okay, we had three students in sixth grade that were in the average range, 11 and seventh, and six and eight. So you can look at that breakdown, look at the mean, look at standard deviation, all of that stuff. And then you can also compare it to the national norm. So you have your schools on the left-hand side compared to the national norm. Um, so that's kind of a nice, a nice report to pull once you have all the data in your system. Okay, so that just shows you the breakdown. So it's showing you the 11th to 26th, 26th to 74th, and then it just shows you all those that are above average and one as well. Okay, this is another report you can pull. This is called the Scores and Skills Plan Report. You can pull this for each individual kid, but you could also pull it for a grade level or for your class. Um, so this breaks down, in this case, this is a picture of the numeracy one, but students also took the math composite. This shows you how they score in each area. So it has each assessment and a breakdown, and then you can also see the breakdown down below. So it says you, tells you how many kids were in each area on that assessment. Um, and it can kind of explain those ranges here. Um, on the stu individual student report, if you wanted to send it home to parents, I like that one because it tells you, instead of just telling you L and F, it says letter naming fluency, and then it tells you what that assessment is. It's only like a one little sentence explanation, but that still gives them more than in the past when I had to send home these reports and I, I didn't like to do it because it didn't mean anything to parents. They have no idea what they're looking at. They just saw an acronym and some numbers. And I like that this does give more information. 
So this is the group's version, but no, on the individual one, it does give you some more information about what those assessments are. Um, it also breaks it down over on the right-hand side by peers, if you still like to use peers. And then at the bottom, it shows the classroom growth. So it shows how is that class or grade level progressed from fall to winter, winter to spring, fall to spring. Okay, and it compares it to the national norm. So I like that part as well. Um, the reports, I think some are becoming available in Spanish. I'm not sure if they all are, though. So. Um, I think definitely if you've given the assessments in Spanish, then those ones are available. But I have to check to see if they're all available now in this new version or not. They should be, so hopefully they are, but I can't promise that. Okay, you have your rate of improvement growth norms report. So if you really want to just see your student growth, you can look at this for the individual level and you can look at this for the class or grade. So it shows what we're doing, how did students grow versus just what was their score. Okay, here's your peer transition report. I know a lot of schools use this in the past. Um, and it looks like this top part here. So it broke down your tier one, tier two, tier three. Down below, it explains to you what that gro what growth has or not what growth, what change happened. So if I had two students in the red in the fall, what happened to them? It tells you one went to red, one stayed in red, and one moved up to yellow. If I had five in green, it'll tell you all five went to green, stayed in green in the winter, or if something changed, it'll tell you. Um, one addition that I like to this is the student details down below. So I can look at this as, at the whole class level or grade level, but then down below it'll tell me the individual students and I'll get to see what, what's going on with them. What things did they, did they move up, did they move down? Gives me all of that information and it breaks it down by the different tiers as well. So I can see what's happening with my tier three kids, what's happening with my tier two. Okay, let's just zoom in on it. The same thing, what you're used to in the past. Um, you can also pull a peer transition details report that's separate. Um, and this will download it to an Excel sheet so you could disaggregate the data however you want. Okay, this is new as well. This is a math skills analysis report. Um, so this itemizes it, which is kind of nice. Um, so students take that standard based math assessment and this breaks it down for you so you can actually, you could look at it for the individual student, remember, but in the, if you're in the group section like this, you can actually see, okay, for this, for item 37, and if you hover over it, it shows you what item 37 was, and then it breaks it down with, it tells you which students got it correct or incorrect. So this is a nice report to pull to see weaknesses your students had or an area that a lot of kids missed. And it also, this one up here at the top that you're seeing, you can break this down as well um, to see which students got it correct or incorrect. And these lines on here um, are showing you the national norm versus where your students were performed. Okay, we kind of already showed, talked about the norm tables. Know that when you go to those norm tables, you can also export any of those to print. So all you have to do is pull up what you want to see on your screen, and then the top right hand corner, you click export. And you could export the norm report. So anytime you want to pull any report into the system or your test ticket, you would click export in the top right hand corner. Okay, so now it's going to just kind of show some previews of the student report. So, we kind of, I pulled the benchmark comparison report. It just didn't have very much information in it. So, and this is just laying out all the different things that are available to you on here. So, we talked about what that paper pencil meant. That means it's a report or that's a test that the student has a paper in front of them. You're marking on the computer. If it's a test ticket, then they will get in and take the test. Now, if they're, like in this case, what you're seeing on this screen, 
the students already have their composites done, but if you wanted to give them the oral reading fluency, it still has that paper and pencil next to the student's name available um, if you wanted to give them the oral reading fluency group. So that's still, no matter what grade level, you can still give that. The I, remember, goes to the student profile. And up here at the top, that's your breakdown of your percentile band, but you will notice that it changes um, depending on, how, on your breakdown of your class. So if you had 50% of your students in the well below average range, then up here, this orange bar would take up 50% of the place, the space. Um, so up here at the top, it'll just match what your breakdown of your class is. So if you have a lot of blue, the blue is going to get bigger. If you have a lot of green, the green is going to grow. So that's just to show you a breakdown of your class. The percentile band is always what it shows down here in the list. First through the 10th, 11th through the 25th, 26th through the 74th, etc. Okay, we're going to also look at it in tiers. And if you do have it on tiers, when you select all and export it, then it'll pull up a report that is also in tiers. Okay, so that's what your report will look like. Now, when we pulled up the report earlier, we didn't have any of these things. Let me take a zoom then. No, it doesn't. Um, we didn't have any of these bars in place. That's because those are only showing up if you create a progress monitoring goal. So if you made a goal for your students and they start to progress towards it, you'll be able to see what their progress is from this main screen. You can see it in other places too, but it's just so you can, this is to give you an overview of the student in general. So it'll show a bar and percentage towards that. Okay, here's your student profile screen. So we looked at this, but it didn't have as much information in it. This is what it would look like if there's a lot of this going there. So anytime you want to print a score, you could. If you want to print what the, how the student performed, if this would print button would pull up the last time they were tested. Like in fall, it would pull up that fall one. If you press here, it would pull up the winter one, and you could print it off. And then over here, if they were being progress monitored on a weekly, a bi-weekly, a monthly basis, all of the times they've been tested would show up over here, and you could print those reports at any, or print those assessments at any time. So that would be all available right here. Um, there's also this top 10 task area. That's if you want to add any information about the student. Um, so if you want to write that they're having an IEP meeting coming up on X date, you could put that in, and then that would be viewable from that spot as well. Another thing they added is a notes area. So next to the student's name, this is an outdated form. Um, our next outdated screenshot of the way Amsbook Plus looks. In the new version, they updated this week. Next to the I, you see like a little paper, and you can click that paper and add notes about the student at any time. So that's kind of nice, a nice addition, I think, because um, before there wasn't really a place to put them. So now you can add notes. Uh, anything else we can go over? Oh yes, if you have an intervention on the student, that would also show up here and what the intervention is. And if you want to pull a report on any anything, so if you want to pull a benchmark comparison report on literacy, then you can click this little paper next to where it says deposit and it'll pull a benchmark comparison report for that. If you want to pull just how they were doing on letter naming fluency throughout the year, you click that little paper next to LNF and it'll pull a report on that. Um, if you want to pull the student's progress monitoring goal, um, their report on how they're progressing towards their goal, you can put the paper next to oh, that from here, and there's another place you can print it as well. I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, you can also, if you're on this screen in the top right hand corner, you could click export student profile, and it would show something like this to print out. This will give all their information in one place. And you can also, from the main benchmark comparison screen, select all the students and pull a report like this as well. 
Here's the individual benchmark report. So you can do this from the main screen by doing that batch thing that we talked about, select all, export, batch, benchmark, report, and you can pull all of them at the same time. And you can choose if you want these lines on there, if you want them off, if you want it comparing to the norms or not. Um, this is generally what a report would look like. This is pretty similar to how it looked in the past. They've just given you a couple more options now. Okay, so again, that's the breakdown, what it's showing you. Shows you the national average, target line, if you choose to have that on there. And there's always keys on Amazon Plus. So they added all these colors and all this extra stuff. Just remember to always look at the keys. You don't have to memorize everything. Okay, so I talked about this earlier. I didn't realize there was a slide too, but this is the score snapshot report. So we looked at it at the group level, but this is what it looks like for the individual. So um, just like I was saying, it has a just little tiny description of what each assessment is, and then gives you a little bit of information about what makes this for me. So if you're saying well, that helps the parents, I think it's more information than it used to be. Still not perfect, but it's better. And this is a new one too. So this goes with um, the standard space assessment, but if you wanted to print it off for the individual student, this breaks it down by domain. So these are like the five math domains, and then it breaks it down um, to the individual item set. So this is more of the actual standard. So counts, objects, and a scattered set. If the student got it correct, there'd be a number here. If they got it incorrect, then it would say zero. Um, so this is for each standard, just to show you show the parents how the student's performing based off of this one assessment. Um, so that's an option to send home as well. Here's the skills plan report. So this is like the same, what we just looked at here, this is the math one. Here's what the reading looks like. So for reading, it just breaks it down into different areas of reading, like informational text. And then it'll give you a little descriptor to say how, what it was, what this area was testing and how students scored in that area. Okay, we looked at this for the group level, um, but here's kind of how it would look like for the individual student. The pool on the analyzing the actual problem that they took the test on and how they scored. Okay, we also, I think, already talked about how to print those reports, but it's good for you to have this slide. Um, so if you have this slide, great. Oh, it doesn't even walk you through it, but make sure you just pull the PDF of how to print it. But select and click export. Okay. So I'm going to, I know that you guys are not there yet for progress monitoring. So if you can't even hear about it, you can just turn me off, not, not listen to me for the rest of it. But I just want to show you what it's going to look like when you're ready for that, okay? And also, someone can message me and tell me to stop if you don't want to hear about it. But <laughs> I think it's good to see where things are going. We need to know about Okay, so after you've benchmarked your students. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep going. It's just so hard in a webinar because I can't see your faces. I can't see what's happening over there. So I have no idea how you guys are feeling. <laughs> So, apologize for that. So, it hopefully my account's working. That's gonna, it's not even working, I can't show you. Let me just try to log back in again. Your <laughs> mind is spinning. Oh, believe me, I understand. Initially, I had to learn this through the way you guys are with webinar, and it's so much easier when you can see it in person. Um, but just remember, the videos and all that stuff are really helpful, so just one step at a time. And especially if you're trying to give information to another teacher, just literally tell them that one little baby step that they need at a time. All right, so I'm gonna go into early literacy, first grade classroom, okay? They've been benchmarked. I have all these pink exclamation points. Pink in AIMSWeb is a bad thing, okay? Pink is always like a warning. Like maybe they didn't want to put red anymore, um, so they put pink. So if you see pink, that's a warning symbol. 
that something's wrong, we need to do something. All right, so take exclamation point, you can progress monitor. If there's a black plus mark next to the name, that also shows that they're below grade level. So either one. Remember when we're progress monitoring, we generally want to progress monitor on grade level kids who are in the yellow. So 11th through the 25th percentile. So what you can do, hold on. Find a student who is in that band. If they're way well, well below average, you can do a server level assessment. Or you could, depending on it, you could decide to make a goal at that level. Um, it's just up to you. So I'm going to go with Jake Archer here. When I click the pink exclamation point, it says progress monitoring recommended basically across the board. Um, and he fell within the 22nd to 23rd percentile. So he's not well below average, he's pretty close. So that's probably a good student to progress monitor on and hopefully get them up to grade level pretty fast. So I can decide it for myself, you know, as my as a teacher of that classroom, maybe I noticed these really sight words are what's holding them up and that's why we did that at oral reading fluency. So I could progress monitor them on sight words. I'll click the plus sign and it's gonna bring me to this screen. Now this is super confusing because there's dates that haven't happened here on this one page, that will not be on your own screen. I'm sorry about that. Just for to ignore those two <laughs> and take the one that is the most recent. So, okay, this one is from last week. I can use that one as my baseline. You may have old scores. Normally, it would, you should not see future scores or something wrong with your account. But if you see past scores, take the most recent because that's going to be the most accurate data. And if your data is outdated, like if you progress monitor them in August, but you're deciding to, or sorry, benchmark them in August, but you decide you want to progress monitor the student in October, you may want to get a new baseline um, by doing a sur new survey level assessment. So you could do a survey level assessment on grade level just to give you a new baseline, and that would show up here, and you could select that um, so that you have more recent data. Okay, so select. The most recent, then you have to decide how long do you want to progress monitor the student. In this case, I'm thinking he's close to grade level, so I probably don't want that to be a progress monitoring goal that goes for the whole year. That doesn't seem appropriate for this case. So let's say I make it, I don't know, before Christmas break, December. Okay, that gives me 20 weeks if I start now. Um, I could also change the date. Instead of dragging, I can go to this plus or minus sign. I could also type it in. Or I could click the calendar and select the date as well. So it gives you plenty of options to pick the date for some reason. Um, notice on the date it's selecting that whole week. So it's no longer selecting a day of the week, if that makes sense. So like in the past, we had to say, I'm going to progress monitor the student every Friday. And that's when I was supposed to progress monitor them. Now it just gives you a week window. So if I select, if I create a progress monitoring goal, it's going to open up one week for the kids. Or one week a month if I have it set it monthly. Um, and any time I accept them, it counts for that week and it won't open again until the next week. So it doesn't matter anymore what day you set them of the week. Okay, over here you can decide you will do the weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. My recommendation is take the most conservative, okay? So if you pick monthly, it's only going to let you assess them once a month at the maximum. But if you pick weekly and you only assess them once a month, that's fine. If you pick weekly and you assess them once a week, that's fine. If it is weekly, that's fine. If it's only once a month, that's fine. Um, so it'll just skip the weeks on their progress monitoring report. Um, but if you pick monthly, you can't assess them more than once a month. So if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. Um, okay, so you pick baseline, your date, how often you want to assess the student, and then you come over here to setting the goal. Okay, Info Plus will do this for you now, but you know where the norm tables are if you need something specific. So what I do is 
I just drag this bar until it moves to somewhere between uh, closes the gap and ambition. So notice up in the top right hand corner, it, it changed from insufficient, then it went to close the gap, and I'm going to go all the way up to ambition. And I usually like to just go right in between there. I usually stay on the ambitious side, but that's the recommendation. So ambitious would be a rate of improvement of 1.35. In that case, that would be words read per week. So our rate of, your rate of improvement would be one more 1.35 uh, more words read per week. So that seems like pretty doable for my students. Um, here it tells me their percentile, so that puts them at the 51st percentile, and that would be a score of 40. So something strange I think they still need to fix is that this bar down here that I was dragging does not align to this graph up here. So don't, I used to like, be very confused about that when I first started using it. Plus, is why doesn't it look like it? Low average down here, but up here it's telling me that's a 51% 51st percentile. So just these are separate things. 30 is just to give you an idea that the score of 39 would be in the 50th percentile. And if you look up here, that makes sense because I put 40 to 40 and that puts them at the 51st percentile. Okay, so you want to be somewhere between closing the gap and a bit. And just remember when you guys get here. This, when you're ready to make this step um, to create progress monitoring goals, there are good resources that there are so free to look at. There's even videos. I can send you um, some pre-recorded webinars as well to help guide you through that. Um, so I'm going to be sending you a ton of stuff. So just brace yourself for that um, and look at it when you need it. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to drag it between both of the gap. And ambition. It's going to tell you what percentile here that puts them at. This is their score. You can always go to the North table and find the exact score. Or you can just click here. If, you, if your IC says 30th, then you can say, okay, that's the 30th. That's going to be 428. Um, but input plus recommends an ambitious goal for each student, whatever that may be. So um, based off of the national norms, this would be it. And if you're good with it, at this point you could add on an intervention. You would have had to already create an intervention. Okay, I didn't create. I didn't say you had to create an intervention just now, but you would have had to have a pre list, a pre created list of interventions. You select the one that matches this kid. You click confirm. You can change the start date. Like if you know I'm not going to start it until next Monday, you could say I'm starting it next Monday. You click confirm. And when everything looks good on this page, you would click save up at the top. This is the one place that you need to click save. Okay, and then from there, that student would then have an intervention goal, a progress monitoring goal um, set up for them. And next to their name, it will have a little bar. Let me find them. Uh, that's probably too far down. There we go. So I think it was Jake. Hopefully. I might be wrong. I might have picked a different kid. I think it was Jake. So next to Jake's name now, under word reading fluency, because that's what I set up a goal on. Notice he has a little bar, and it just says NA, which means indeterminate, uh, because he needs at least four data points in the system within a six week period for it to start showing some progression towards his goals. And at that point, it's gonna show up gray if he's like close. If it's so, gonna show up green, if he's doing really great, he's gonna surpass or meet his goal really soon. And if it's pink, then you know that that's not a good thing and that you might wanna look into doing a change in intervention or goal change for that student because they're not making progress towards their goal. Okay, so once you, you'll be able to look at all that later as well, just showing you where it is. Um, the other place you're going to be able to see this now, when you're ready to progress monitor your kids for the week under the drop down, there's benchmark comparison, that's where you benchmark all your kids at the beginning, but there's also monitor right under that. 
All the students your progress monitoring will show here on the screen. And you can decide if it's a grade level or a certain assessment. But here's with all here's with all your students. And when it's time to assess them for that week, um, if it's a ticket, you have to unlock it from here. If it's a paper pencil, you can just click and it will pop up right away. Um, all these ones that are gray, I cannot even click on right now because it's not opened up yet. Because they've been assessed earlier this week, or in this case it looks like the future, whatever is happening with this account. But if it's gray, it means the, um, they've already been assessed for that week, so you can't assess them until the next week or the next month if you have it set up that way. If it's pink, remember that's not a good thing. So in this case, Jay Archer is behind on one of his assessments. I need to progress monitor him. Um, and if it's just black, then it'll let you click it in there on schedule. So no more having to put in that they're absent. If they're not there, then it'll just skip that. And if I click the bar at any point from the progress monitor screen, um, or from the benchmark comparison screen, from the student profile screen, it'll pull this up and I will be able to either click adjust the plan if I want to change something or I can click view report and if I want to view the report then this will come up. Okay so what happened is this is a student that this is Jake Archer who I just made a goal on but they must have already had a goal ongoing um, so or maybe not maybe this is a different one I don't know. Um, so it shows that there was a baseline for them on July 29th and then soon after that there was an intervention change. So intervention change is going to be triangles going vertically up to the screen. If you change the goal, it's going to be two parallel lines. And notice weeks that were, if there are weeks skipped, it will just um, leave it blank. If you did a change in the goal or intervention, it will be gray. But it should still have data in it. This just doesn't have enough data in it, sorry. And then underneath, it'll have the description of what that intervention is and a goal statement for the child. If anything's changed, it'll test say what those changes were or have to, what changes have been made. And this will start to show a color too. This doesn't have enough data in it, but if it did, it would start showing up. Um, there'd be, this would be gray or green or pink. Um, and then if the goal is met, there'd be a gold star. If the goal is not met, then there'd be a pink star. Um, yeah. One more thing. I know this isn't supposed to be all about progress monitoring, but just something to keep in mind that I that happened to me that I didn't realize, so I try to tell all teachers, if you feel like they're really close to getting to reaching their goal but they need a couple more weeks, make sure you change the date before it expires because once the goal is fired, you have to create a new goal. It won't let you just go in and adjust and extend and it. You have to extend it before it expires. Yes. All right, I know that's so much information. <laughs> so you guys will be getting a lot of stuff <laughs> to move on or to, to do it as you're ready. So one step at a time, all this is in your slides as well. But then just remember the PDF. You can do, you can create a progress monitoring goal from any of these screens that this is showing. This should be, this is just a, an overview of when you should survey level of test. So we talked about this, but this is a good maybe thing to mark when you're trying to think about if you should survey level of test is doing or not. So, if they're below grade level, you do it on grade level. If they're well below grade level, then you might think about moving down to grade level and uh, survey level assessing there. And you can also survey level assess if your data is not recent enough. Okay, this is in there for you. Um, if you need to think about developmentally um, where your students are at. So if your students is struggling with letter word sound fluency, it recommends dropping back to LNF. If they're struggling with letter naming fluency, you can go back to initial sound. And you can work your way from any point here. Okay, 
remind you how to survey the little steps in there. How often do you monitor all, it walks you through all of these steps so you can go back and look at this um, when you're ready. All right, let me just make sure there's not something urgent in here that you guys need to see. I know we're, our time is just about out. I think you're going to be, I think you guys are good. I'm going to send you a bunch of the resources, like I said. So I'll send you, I can send you measure definitions. This is that reports reference I was talking about. There's webinars I'm going to send you. Uh, auto rostering, my webinars as well. So I have a big list I wrote down here that I'll send you. Always remember your health file. That's probably that your most useful yeah. place of where you can go. You can also email me, okay? My email is, I think, on the end of this slide, so don't give me my email. Um, also in the help are these administration scoring videos, but I'll send links as well so you'll have those. And you can also, at any time, call this phone number. If they don't get back to you very fast, I really am you're welcome to send me an email at any time. Um, here's my email down here, NicoleJahari at Pearson.com. So anytime you have a question, feel free to just reach out and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. If I'm not doing a training, it should be that day. And then if you guys could please provide your feedback um, at bit.ly forward slash AWP. Nicole, it's a really quick survey just to say how today went. And do you guys have any questions for me? <laughs> okay, well, feel free to, <laughs> to ask a few of the Amelia, did, did you write that? <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> that's all. And also, one more good thing, you guys have, yeah, you have, you have my email, and you also, when you purchase this three-hour webinar, you also have an additional hour. So if you guys get started, and then you realize you have a million more questions, well, we could use the hour to, to walk through any of those things you guys have questions about. <laughs> You're welcome. Is there anything that you guys want to ask right now? Or do you all want to send them out in email form? Whatever you guys so, want. To get logged down to this, we got her. we got to get rostered. We probably get rostered. I think she's going to send us the auto rostering. How do, like, we get our, like, even district mask her. Right. That's my question. Where do I start before we get this roll with? We usually benchmark the second day of school. Yeah, I think we're going to push Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you look at your calendar and send me new dates to be yeah. on okay. assessment and stuff. I think we're going to revise those. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to start answering. How do we get our district account going? That is your up here. Whoever's in charge of the sale portion, which I don't have any access to. However, I do know the manager of that person, so I can send them out an email um, just saying, hey, um, you guys are ready to get going. Is there anything that they, like, have you actually gotten your email, I guess, that says you can start your account, no. or are you still waiting on that? Okay, so I will email the person who is in charge of that, and I noticed recently, every time I email her, suddenly it gets done that day, so hopefully that's the case. Um, so I will send an email that you guys are waiting on that. Uh, the other question Molly had, is we're doing okay, when would you suggest to have the follow-up? I would suggest after benchmarking. So if you benchmark, and then you just want to kind of go through again, how to progress monitor and make sure you understand all of that. We can do it then. Or you could um, 
we can spend time analyzing data. It's really whatever you guys want. And also, you can choose to do it in one hour, or you can choose to do split it up into you know just calling and having questions whenever you want. So you guys can decide that. So your first step would be getting your account set up. So hopefully that email. If I send that email through, hopefully you guys will get your something about your account getting set up uh, through your salesperson, and then those videos on auto rostering and stuff should tell. Okay. Do you guys have anything pressing right now? Okay. Do you have um, for her? Yeah. yeah. Just how we get started. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Well, thank and you guys so much. I appreciate your flexibility with technology today. Hopefully all this stuff will get figured out soon, and then you guys have my email to just reach out if you need to. Have a good beginning of your school year. Thank you. It just got way more complicated. <laughs> yep. We have a big to-do list. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm thinking for a